So now as we continue our look at the human heart, we're going to entitle the next flowchart, Human Heart 2. And what we want to continue talking about are the valves that are there to ensure and prevent uh, the backflow that we definitely don't want in a unidirectional blood flow system. Let's just remind ourselves that we have two valves that we've already covered, and those were the two AV valves, the atrioventricular valves. There are four overall, and that's what we'll continue talking about in the next this flowchart. So we have four valves. Those valves, again, serve this purpose of preventing backflow. And we want to make sure that we prevent this backflow in order to really make sure that we have a unidirectional flow of blood. <coughs> And that's exactly what we're going to be seeing here. So let's take a look at the rest of the valves. Again, this is shown in figure 42.6. So the other two valves that need to be focused um, are two semilunar valves. These are separate from the AV valves and will also have a bit of a different function. The two semilunar valves are going to be located between the ventricles and the exits of the heart. So now we're looking at a separate area between the ventricles, let's rewrite that, between the ventricles plus the exits of the heart. And so in this position, in this orientation, the role is going to be a bit different. What we noticed about the semilunar, uh, semilunar valves that's of interest to us is that they are going to be forced open via ventricular contraction. Notice how the AV valves were basically forced closed via ventricular contraction. Because those were forced closed by the ventricular contraction, something has to give, something has to open. That blood pressure is going to directly open, this contraction is going to directly open the semilunar valves. So forced open via ventricular contraction. The two semilunar valves are going to be classified as the pulmonary valve, so this will be the valve that opens and leads to the pulmonary. That's going to be the lungs. This is going to be the first one that opens as a result of a ventricular contraction. This is specifically the right ventricle contracting will cause the pulmonary valve to open. And therefore, the pulmonary valve is conveniently and correctly located between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery. Again, notice the term here, artery. Artery means going away from the heart. We're looking at a point at which we have a ventricle and also an exit of the heart. The exit that we're going to is the pulmonary artery away from the heart from the right ventricle. So right ventricle, hop on the pulmonary artery. We're now going away from the heart. We have to pass through this door known as the pulmonary valve. That's the first one. And the other one is known as the aortic valve. This is the second valve, the second semilunar valve, that opens from the left ventricle contraction, and therefore this one will be located conveniently and correctly at the left ventricle between it and what is known as the aorta. The aorta is a major, major artery that sends blood to the rest of the body via the systemic circuit. So the aortic valve functions mainly in the systemic circuit, whereas the pulmonary valve uh, namely functions within the pulmonary circuit, just like their names imply. So those are our semilunar valves. We have four total, two AV, two semilunar. Just remember that all the valves are there in order to make sure we have unidirectional flow of blood. Now, once we have unidirectional flow of blood, we're actually going to get some characteristic sounds from the heart. There are going to be two main heart sounds. And these are very common. Many people have heard of them before and understand what they uh, sound like, but don't really understand their purpose and where they come from, what are they the result of. There are going to be two main heart sounds due to any time the valves close. So valves closing will cause a heart sound, the characteristic heart sound that you're familiar with. So what we have first, the first heart sound, is known as lub. This is the first heart sound whenever you think of a heartbeat. The lub sound is going to be rather low pitched and it's also going to be longer lasting as compared to the second sound. So it's a low pitched, long lasting sound and this is going to signify valves closing. But which valves will, it, will be closing in a lub sound? That's going to of course be the first valves that open and thus the first valves that close. That would be the AV valves. So the AV valves were the first to open, that means that they're going to be the first to close, and when they close, 
you will hear the lub noise from a heartbeat. Next up would be the dup noise. So you have lub and dup. Dup is the second sound that is heard during a heartbeat. This is a higher pitch sound, and again, this is relative to the lub sound that's initially heard. This is a higher pitch sound, and it's also going to be shorter lasting. So it's quicker, this sound. And this is going to signify, of course, the next set of valves that close, and that would be the semilunar valves. This shows that the semilunar valves have closed. Now, sometimes when you have a heartbeat, the lub and dup can actually be off. It may not be perfectly uh, functioning to give you that characteristic bump bump sound of a heartbeat. What that signifies is something known as a heart murmur. When a heart murmur is present, this simply shows you or it allows you to hear that there's some sort of abnormal blood flow. And the abnormal blood flow is characteristically going to be caused by a valve dysfunction, some sort of valve dysfunction. Most of the time, heart murmurs are due to abnormal blood flow that is a result of semilunar valve damage. The semilunar valves, the ones that are going to lead and exit blood out of the heart, they may be damaged, and this results in backflow. And the backflow will be specifically to which part of the heart. You have to ask yourself, which part of the heart does the semilunar valve sort of separate? And that's between the ventricles and the exits of the heart. If we want blood to exit out of the heart and not backflow, what do we want to prevent the backflow from? We don't want blood to go back into the ventricles. We want it to be pushed from the ventricles and exit the heart from some sort of vein or some sort of artery away from the heart. So now what we have here is that there's going to be some sort of backflow into ventricles. And if there's a backflow into ventricles, because the semilunar valves aren't working, because, the ab because this is going to result overall in abnormal blood flow, what you get is a heart murmur, which is classified as not as lub dup anymore, but it's actually classified clinically as a lub sh noise. So lub sh noise will give you a, uh, will be characteristic of a heart murmur, meaning that some sort of semilunar valve malfunction or dysfunction is occurring. That covers our look at the valves of the heart and the correct sounds that we should hear if we have correct unidirectional flow of blood. In the next flow chart, we're going to be focusing on the actual heartbeat and how it functions and how it is done via the different pacemaking cells and characteristics associated with the heart.